So for this video, um, I'm going to unbox this package that I got off of Foodie Japan. Um, I was so glad that I was able to find an online resource where I could actually purchase some brushes from Akohodo. Now, um, I do have to say that this purchase is actually a little bit of some, like, it's a FOMO kind of a purchase because I've been reading a lot of stuff online saying that, like, you know, um, Hakodo is going to be increasing their prices by June, things like that. So I actually kind of like jumped into the bandwagon. And after I got these brushes, I thought to myself, oh, maybe next time I'm not going to do it because when there are brushes that are like, you know, a little bit expensive, I really want to see them in person first. But, they, you know, um, ever since the pandemic happened and, um, I have not been able to go to Japan because for the past two years, I actually have a list um, here on my notebook showing, like, you know, um, where I actually wrote down which brushes from Hakuhodo I wanted to purchase. Now, um, because, you know, Hakuhodo is expensive, so I really, I really want to feel the brushes in my hands first. I want to see it in person before I actually purchase it because there are brushes that I want to have, but there's this specific type of brush set that I want. Um, like, you know, that I envision in my head. And if I don't see a brush in person, sometimes it would end up, I would end up not using those brushes. So it would be like put to waste. So um, anyway, so these are the brushes that I have, like, you know, listed down because I do want to have them in my collection. So hopefully the brushes that I got from Hakuhodo via Foodie Japan are the brushes that I have envisioned in my head. That's Sholo, by the way, in the mirror. Say hi, Baba. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to unbox this with you guys together because I actually want to um, wash the brushes first before I actually, like, you know, try to use it because I actually prefer um, to use brushes after they have bloomed, after washing them. All right. Okay, so now the box is open. And, oh. We have chips. Thank you so much, Toshiya. I love those. It really reminds me of Japan. Okay, and in this, like, you know, white foam-like packaging is the Hakuhodo packaging. And let's open them. All right, so these are the brushes that I got from Hakuhodo. So let me just show you guys what I got one by one. Okay, let's start with this brush first. Can I remember the name? It's so difficult to remove it from its plastic packaging. <laughs> All right, and the first brush that I have here is the J142 brush. It is a blending brush of sorts, and as you guys can see here, the brush head kind of like tapers into a point, which you can use to add color into your socket line, or you blend color into the crease. Now, the brush head to me feels very, very soft, but I feel a little bit of some resilience in it. It has some strength, so this is great to use to blend colors nicely on the socket of the eye. And the next brush that I have here is the J146 brush. And it's very similar to the brush that I showed you guys earlier, which is the J142 brush. So if we just put them side by side, we can see that the J146 is actually shorter than the 142. And the brush head has, um, it's not as thick as the J142 brush. And since this is a smaller brush, it means that we can use it to add more detailing into the eye. The brush head is still very, very soft, and we can also feel some resilience to it. Now, these are both made of goat hair, so at least we can use this for cream and powdered products. Okay, next, what I have here is the G5522 brush. Now, this brush is very, very beautiful, and the brush head here is made of squirrel, ash squirrel hair, and a mix of goat hair. So I can feel it. It's very, very silky to the touch, but it's actually quite strong as well. But it doesn't feel as strong as the J142 or the J146. So if you have sensitive eyes, this is a great brush to use. And basing on the brush head design here, 
it's a little bit round it doesn't taper into a sharp point here so this will be great for blending into the crease or the socket line look at that it feels very very soft like super like unbelievable now next what I have here is a G5517 brush and the brush head here is actually made of horse hair and although it feels very soft to the touch right now I can actually feel that this is quite a you know, strong brush it's a very resilient brush so if you need something to blend out like you know very hard to blend out colors or hard to pick up pigments from the pan this is a great brush to use so this is the G5517 brush. And next what I have here is the G5533 brush. Now the brush head here is made of pure ash quill here. And the brush head has a dome-like tip design here. It doesn't sharpen into a point like the other brushes that I'm showing you today. And it's actually very, very soft, of course, because it's made of squirrel hair so if you have someone again who has very sensitive um, eyelids this is a great brush to use and you can really use this to buff out the color and to create like you know gradual color on your eyelids and um, also if you have like you know very strong high pigment eyeshadow colors in your collection and if you don't want to have a high impact of color you can actually use this so that you are able to apply a much more like you know delicate color application on your eyelid again this is very 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 soft and as you guys can see it doesn't have a lot of strength on it but then again as i've said earlier if you have sensitive eyes this is great to use all right and next the final brush that i'm showing you guys is from their flagship range and this is their s145 brush from the vermilion line look at that so the brush head here is made of Kolinsky so I'm so happy with this because this is my first Kolinsky makeup brush and because and the reason why I got this is because Kolinsky is actually great to use if you use a lot of cream or liquid eyeshadow products because this brush head will have the strength to pick up and blend out those colors so as you guys can see the brush head here is very very small and again we can you can, you can see the resistance and the strength that this brush head has but it still feels very very soft to the touch yeah i'm so excited i'm so glad that i have this finally after all this time now as you guys have noticed most of the brushes that i have now in my hands are have long handles except for the G5533 brush which has a medium handle and the reason why is because the long handles for this is out of stock so um, while well, I was thinking of maybe waiting to get the G5533 brush at a longer handle but I didn't have the patience to wait for it all right so these are the brushes that i got from hakahojo recently so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to wash them and then once they've dried um let's try to get to know them one by one better hey guys so it's actually been um two days since i started vlogging and yesterday I actually played around with this so I had to wash them again and I had to wait for them to be dry before I could continue with my vlog and um, the main reason why I decided to play around with these brushes yesterday is because I wanted to get to know them a little bit better because it's the first time that I'm trying these types of um, eyeshadow brushes from Hakuhodo so I did record it so I'm just going to insert some b-rolls as I talk about it because it's going to be like sort of a first impression kind of thing so as usual i always use my veiny arm for this and i actually used my editorial brights palette from viseart i used one of the just one eyeshadow for all of the brushes and i started with the s145 and i just added one swipe of it on my arm and i was very surprised on how even this actually delivered pigment and um like you know, i was i was really shocked like on how great it performed now next is a g5533 brush this is the pure ash grill brush and um it delivered a very diffuse color on my arm 
which was not so bad at all. I was expecting it that way. And next is the G5517 brush. This is the one that's made of horse hair and it delivered still a very diffused um, eyeshadow color but more intense. Okay, next what I have here is the G5522 brush and this is the one that's mix of ash squirrel and goat hair. And again, we get a very diffused um, eyeshadow color on my arm. And the next, this is the J146 brush. And when, like, you know, it swiped the color in my arm, um, it still delivered a very diffuse color, but more intense. Um, like, you know, I was very surprised by it. I wasn't expecting it to be like that. And the next brush here is the J142 brush. And again, I was expecting this to deliver a very diffuse amount of color in my arm. And I wasn't surprised at all by this. So this is how um, the, the eyeshadow looks like all swatched in my arm using all of these um, eyeshadow brushes from Hakuhodo. Again, as I've said before, um, I was expecting them to deliver a very nice diffused color on my skin, but the S145 brush really delivered a very even um, tone of color in my arm, which I was so surprised about because this is, again, the first time that I have a Kolinsky eyeshadow brush. So um, all of these brushes actually held on to the pigment extremely well. And as you guys can see here, I'm just like, you know, layering um, the color on the existing swatch here on my arm. And I did not tap any of these brushes into the eyeshadow again. So um, the color here is intensifying, as you see in my arm, but um, it's just using the pigment that I collected when I first started this part of the video. Now, as expected, all of these brushes delivered a very nice diffused color on my skin. Um, I was especially so surprised with the S145 because this one, um, I wasn't expecting it to perform that way because in my head, I was going to use this for like, you know, liquid eyeshadows and cream eyeshadows because after all, Kolinsky brushes are, they're, they're very resilient. You can use them for water-based products or oil-based products. That's why um, sometimes when you are like, you know, doing painting classes, one of the most important brushes that you have to have is a Kolinsky brush. But when I was in college, I didn't have any Kolinsky brushes because they were quite expensive and I couldn't afford them at the time. And then again, all of these um, very, very diffuse color application, very even the way that they just lay the product um, on my arm. So I'm very, very happy with that. Okay, so I'm going to use some of these brushes on my eyes right now just so that we can like, you know, have a gauge because it's very different when we swatch like, you know, eyeshadows using eyeshadow brushes on the arm than on the eye. So I'm just going to use this very old palette of mine and I have like a few mixtures here of some uh, Viseart Petit Pro palettes. Um, I might be concentrating using the Apricotine palette because I love this but who knows. So I might just like you know um, go from one palette to another but anyway so I'm going to start by using the G5533 brush, the squirrel brush and I'm going to pick up uh, maybe this nice pinky brown color here and I'm just going to use it like as an all over eyeshadow brush just like a, as a base and since this is a squirrel eyeshadow brush this will not pick up a ton of color but this will just apply a very nice soft amount of color on the eyes Ooh, okay that's nice and pretty Okay, next, what I want to do is I actually want to try the G5522 brush. Again, this is squirrel and goat, and I'm going to use this to apply, uh, you know, maybe this color here with a hint of this, sort of like as a um, transition shade on my socket line. Oh, look at that. It's really applying a very nice diffused amount of color but I am still so surprised on how much um, this brush actually like you know applies pigment and then you can't really blend it out much like you know as you can see right now and I can also feel it because it's actually very very soft so you can't actually like you know blend it out if you want to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the G5517 brush and this is what I'm going to use just to diffuse that color here onto my brow bone. So as you guys can see, the color is now getting more, less intense. 
Ooh, that's nice. I like that. That's pretty. All right, next, I'm just going to pick up this intense brown here at the very corner. And I'm going to use the S145 brush and maybe just apply it along my lash line. That's a sort of like a, like, you know, diffused eyeliner kind of a look. Just so that it intensifies my lash line. And I'm going back into the color again and I'm going to use this here at the outer V portion. And look how intense that color is. Again, I'm very surprised with the, with the way the S145 actually works. And I'm also going to use this to intensify my socket line. Okay, I'm just going to blend that out further. Okay, blending is the key. I'm not using any eye base um, today because I left it in my home in Metro Manila because I left in a huff and a puff to come here to my home in the province. Okay, so um, I was actually initially um, a little bit on the fence. After I've used this brush when I was watching, I was like, mm, maybe I shouldn't have gotten this, but um, I'm actually glad that I have this now uh, because this really does help me to blend out hard edges. It's a very effective blending brush. And again, this is made of horse, so um, it's quite strong, but it's still actually very, very soft. And then I have the G55 3T brush again, and I'm going back to this pinky brown color here. And I'm just going to use this, like, you know, at the outer edges of the eyeshadows that I used on my crease just so that I could blend out and buff out the color. It's actually not doing anything of buffing out the, like, you know, the existing eyeshadow that I applied, but I can see that actually blending the pinky brown eyeshadow well into my um, brow bone area here, and it's also helping me to blend the color well into my socket line. Okay, so now I'm picking up this color here, and I'm using the J146 brush, so this is a small brush. So, um, I'm just going to use this brush to intensify the color here on my socket line. I just want to see if it works that way, but I'm sure it will. Okay, I'm just being very light-handed with this. And I am quite amazed on how well this brush actually does apply the color. And it's also like creating this very nice, it's, it's like a cut crease of sort. But it's also like helping me to create like a nice lift in this part of my eye. Okay, and I'm just creating my shape. This brush actually does remind me of the mini booster of Sonia G, so as you can see here, but the mini booster is actually smaller in size than the J146. So, um, and it, it doesn't feel as, um, it's not as resilient as the mini booster from Sonia G, so this is actually softer. So at least if you have like, you know, again, sensitive eyes, this might be, this might work for you. And like, you know, this can really help you to uh, create nice shapes in your eye and it will really apply a much more diffused amount of color. Because again, it's soft, like, you know, the bristles are soft. So it splays out more, so it's able to apply a more diffuse amount of color as you go along. Okay, I'm just correcting this part here because I can see that there's a gap there, especially here on screen, and it's driving me nuts. Okay, that's great. So that has given me a lift already. Ooh, I love this. Okay, so now I'm going to add some sparkle and I'm using the J142 brush for that. So, I know, let's just see. And I'm picking up the sparkly color here. I'm going to tap off the excess. And I'm just going to apply it here on my eyelid. Oh, it does the job effectively. I'm so glad. I was actually initially worried that it won't, but... It actually does apply the color well. It picks up the pigments from the pan extremely well as well. Very, very nice. I'm just gonna blend the color into my crease so that we have a nice diffuse color there. 
is this one part here that's driving me nuts. Okay, great. So at least we now know that with the S145 brush, we can apply detailed color application. Like, you know, if you have some spots there that you need to correct, we can use this brush. Okay, I'm going to go back to the J146. I'm just removing the color left here on the brush head. And I'm going to pick up this color here. Oh, it's quite effective in picking up these, like, you know, glittery eyeshadow colors from the Viseart palette. And I'm just going to apply it here on the inner corner. I don't usually use, like, you know, these types of brushes when I want to apply detailing work because um, with um, brushes like these, they always have a tendency of, like, you know, creating fluff on the eyeshadow that you're applying because that's what they do. They buff out things. They blend out things. And um, I actually saw a few glitters fall in this area, but, you know, I'm not being obsessive about it because... I'm just trying out these brushes on my eyes for the first time today with you guys. So at least we have an idea on how we can actually use this. And then with the G552 brush, I'm going back into that nice sugary color here. I'm going to tap off the excess. And I'm going to apply a little bit of that here on my brow bone area. And it's, so, it's too bad that I'm not wearing foundation today, but we'll try it anyway. We can also use this brush to apply like highlighting colors at the highest points of your cheeks. Not so bad. Now, um, this, when I saw this out of the packaging, I instantly thought that it was going to be similar to the Sonia G Detail Pro, but it's actually not. Um, the Detail Pro has a much more dome-like shape here. Well, this one has a much more candle-like type of a shape. So at least it gives you the ability to apply like, you know, details. So here on the brow bone area, or you can know to be to spot apply some highlight here because this one, the Detail Pro from Sonia G, will diffuse color extremely well. So um, now I'm actually planning to use these two in tandem because I use the Detail Pro a lot when I create like you know nose um, contouring for when I'm working, and this one I think will also work like, you know, to create a very nice detailed nose contouring because, like, you know, of the shape of the brush head here. So this will be really, really perfect to apply nose contouring there. So oh, I can't wait to try this. And what else? Oh, so for comparison, the G5533 brush. So as you guys can see here, the brush head here actually has a dome shape. And um, when I got this out, I initially thought that it was actually quite similar to the Polydorf brush. Can let me just see if I could get it. So this is the old Polydorf eyeshadow brush. So I'm gonna put them side by side here because this is also made of like it's a full head of squirrel hair, but this brush has been out of stock for a really, really long time, and I don't think um it's gonna be restocked anytime soon because I've actually been um spying for this brush on Paula's website, but it hasn't been stocked in years. So um so yeah, when I got the G5533 brush, I initially thought it was gonna be the same as the Polydorf. Um, eyeshadow brush here, but it's not. They almost have the same, like, you know, dome shape type of brush head, but the G5533 brush is actually more rounded in the tip than the um, Polydorf brush here. But, you know, I actually love using this to apply, like, you know, intense eyeshadow colors on the crease. And um, I was thinking that I can do that with this. But um, I think I can only use this if I just want to add like a very nice hint of color just to like, you know, help to blend out the colors on the crease. But it's actually very, very soft. It feels so nice on the eyes. So again, if you have sensitive eyelids, get this. Now the G142 and the G146 brush here. Um, it's quite similar to the Sonia G Crease Pro and the Crease 2. I don't have the Crease 1. It's on its way, so I'm quite happy I was able to get that. But um, I'm just going to show you guys here. So the Sonia G Crease brushes here, um, I could say that the brush heads are actually quite um, more resilient because the J142 and the J146, are, as you guys can see how soft they look. 
well this one is very very strong so um, if you want to apply a strong amount of color and blend it out instantly then use the Sonia G um, crease brushes but if you want to build the color slowly on your eye these two can be used and again these brushes are actually smaller so if you have smaller eyes this can work also now if i was going to compare the s145 brush to my s142 brush um they're very different because the s142 brush here as you guys can see is made of ash squirrel or blue squirrel and it's actually very very soft while the s145 here is actually very very resilient now in terms of brush head length the s142 is actually longer than the s145 so um the this brush the s145 actually has an older sister the s141 which actually has a longer bristle the same size as the s142 but alas when i was actually going through the uh, website of Food in Japan, um, the S141 was out of stock. So I'm going to well, wait around for that. But um, as I've said early in the video, um, I don't think I want to purchase any more Hakuhodo brushes um, online because I really want to see them first because I really want to feel the brush in my hand, like, you know, to have that exchange of energy. And, like, you know, it just helps me to become, to be more um, precise with my purchases because, again, Hakuhodo brushes, especially the Vermilion Handled series, are quite expensive. So, at least in doing that, um, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get the right brushes um, that I need in my kit and when I mean and when I mean the right brushes that I need in my kit um, as you guys have seen here well the most of the brushes that I purchased let me remove this almost have the same brush head type except for this one all of them have these like um, you know the shape of the brush head is like the shape of a candle flame and the reason why uh, this is the case is because one of my most favorite brushes that I have ever used is this very old ponytail brush from Laura Mercier like back in the day I think 15 years ago 14 years ago this is my most favorite type of um, crease brush that I have in my kit and I still continue to use this but I'm thinking of retiring it that's why I purchase a lot of these types of brush head because I'm going to put them side by side here. The Laura Mercier brush head is actually the type of brush head that I have been used to using. And uh, like, you know, in, in the way that I apply makeup, um, this is my go-to and it has really helped me to create this like, you know, trademark diffused color on the eye that um, I create. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be comparing how these other brushes work to this because like, you know I can't buy this anymore from Laura Mercier because it's no longer in production and um, I was also initially thinking that this does look similar to either the J or the G series brushes from Hakuhodo but there are some slight differences so um, I don't know if Hakuhodo used to make this but um, you know I'm still on the hunt to find this type of an eyeshadow brush like even when i went to like the brush festival for the first time like you know when i went to mizuho no 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 the, not the first time the second time i went to the brush festival and i went to the uh, main head office of mizuho i also bought their brush and if i put it side by side the ponytail from laura mercier they almost have the same brush head type so this is my peg for crease brushes. So I hope now you guys have, you guys understand the reason why I got these types of eyeshadow brushes from Hakuhodo for this purchase. All right, so also one other thing before I let you guys go, I know that there's so much talk about like, you know, price increases and like, you know, on availability of materials, things like that for our favorite brushes. I know it's inevitable and it's really up to you if you want to purchase them now before the price increase or you can just actually wait until you see them um, for yourself personally so that you know you can you can really choose which brushes that you want. And um, personally, I'd rather, w I don't mind the price increase. Um, I'd rather like, you know, wait until 
I'm able to see the brushes in person. But um, also one other thing, people are always asking me about my recommendations about like, you know what eyeshadow brushes from Hakuhodo or like you know what brushes from Hakuhodo in general do I recommend that you get. Now I can't really say that because um, I don't have a lot of Hakuhodo um, brushes in my collection. Um, but if there's anything, I did create a Hakuhodo video um, back in September during the brush festival um, season because um, I just wanted to show you guys um, my existing Hakuhodo um, collection that I have. So if you are like, you know, in the market to get to know any more brushes from Hakuhodo, do check out that video. I'm going to put a link down um, on the description box to that so that you guys can check it out. And I trust me, all of those brushes, one, two, was it five or six brushes? I use that all the time and they are very sturdy and they were worth the money. And also one other thing, um, what else? I also did a review before of the Sky Blue set, the um, uh, Rewa Celebration set. So those are actually very good brushes, but most of the brushes there come from the Basic Series. And unfortunately, the Basic Series from Hakuhodo is, I think, going to be phased out. And I did check um, before I did this video, and um, if I go, if you go to the Japanese website of Hakuhodo, um, the B series is not listed there anymore. But if you go to the um, the, the American website, the Hakuhodo USA website, the B series is still listed there. And what's great is that um, when you actually hover through the images of the brushes, there's actually like an indication of that brush available in other series that they make. And if you click on one brush again, um, you know, if you go through the description, it actually indicates there, like, you know, if there's a like a variation of that brush, if there's a brush available in that design made of like, you know, full gray squirrel or, you know, made of synthetic hair or made of some other brush. So um, at least if you're interested, like, you know, especially if you're into like the basic series, um, go and check out the Hakuhodo USA website so that you can just have an idea um, where you can get a similar brush from other um, series uh, that Hakuhodo is actually offering. And also one other thing, um, some of the brushes that are like, you know, sold on the Japanese website, especially like, you know, the Kolinsky types of hair, the sable, um, some of them might not be available on the American website because, you know, some hairs are actually not allowed to be sold um, in the United States. So um, at least that's one thing that you have to consider when you're purchasing. Um, these brushes okay all right so that's it for me today i hope that you guys enjoyed this video i hope that it has proved helpful to you especially to get a decision on which brush from hakuhodo you can get for yourself again i'm gonna put all of my hakuhodo videos down in the description box so that you can go and check them out one by one and also one other thing um i do love the yachio brushes from hakuhodo i love their ita brushes so um get them if you want i use them all the time i can use them for powder cream liquid they're very very versatile brushes okay so um if you have any more questions about all the brushes that i use today all of the products leave them down in the comments box and let's have a conversation about it thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and i hope that you're having a good day wherever you are bye